and the big story of the day. Index for industrial production for the month of April has shown almost flat growth of 0.1% compared to last year. IIP in March contracted by more than 3%. According to the data released by CSO, the IIP numbers for 2011-12 stand at 2.8%. Finance Minister Pranam Mukherjee said the figures are disappointing. The state of industrial production in the first month of the current fiscal has been disappointing. The growth in industrial activities measured by the index of industrial production for the month of April has registered a flat 0.1%. The IIP figure for the last financial year as a whole was 2.8%. During April, mining sector contracted by 3% while electricity generation grew by 4.6%. However, manufacturing accounting for 80% in the index grew by mere 0.1%. Finance Minister turned IIP data as disappointing and said contraction in capital goods is a matter of concern. I am disappointed more on capital goods. The performance on the capital goods sectors out of 22 major industries, 12 industry groups have shown positives, but certain other very crucial, including the capital goods, their performance is disappointing. Industry and economists are suggesting that given the dismal factory output, RBI might choose to cut interest rates in its midterm review on 18th June. But the central bank might also like to look at the May inflation numbers due for Thursday. Headline inflation stood at 7.33% in April. Finance Minister Pranam Mukherjee has asked bankers to continue the flow of funds to the productive sectors of the economy. Some banks have already been able to uh, reduce it, but much more work is to be done. But at the same time, I have instructed them not to choke the flow of credit to the sector which requires the uninterrupted flow of credit. A closer look at the data suggests that consumer goods performed well growing at 5%. This shows that the demand side of the equation is still strong, but decline of over 16% in capital goods clearly shows that the industry might want to postpone any future investment for now. With Ajay Mishra, Nitesh Mishra's report, DD News, New Delhi. And causing dents on the Indian growth story, there are several external factors. The biggest of them is the euro crisis. Financial market optimism over Spain's rescue package for its banks has already dried out and there are fears that Cyprus may be next in line for a bailout. A baptism of fire, Luis Maria Linde is sworn in as the new governor of the Bank of Spain, just as the country's banks were about to receive a financial rescue package of up to 100 billion euros. The markets were initially relieved, but investor euphoria soon faded as they began to question the impact of the bailout that pushed Spanish and Italian bond yields up again. Bondholders were worried that the rescue will only add to Spain's fast-rising debt. Analysts are now questioning everything from the size of loan to what conditions could be attached. Whilst the bailout is absolutely necessary, it doesn't really fix anything in the long term. It's almost like a, it's a plaster made out of banknotes, essentially, whilst you need a, a much stronger fiscal surgery that's required both for banks and the Spanish economy as a whole, because, of course, you've still got unemployment one in four. So from that perspective, there are still a lot of uncertainties in terms of the medium to the long term picture. Spanish Prime Minister Mariano Rojoy had insisted the money for the country's banks came without political conditions. But on Monday, EU and German officials said Madrid, like Greece, Ireland and Portugal, will be supervised by the Troika of international lenders. It now looks like Spain might not be the only country to request a bailout this month. Cyprus, which is deeply exposed to Greece, strongly hinted that it may also apply for an international bailout for its banks and the state. Analysts say the deal struck by Spain could make other countries look to renegotiate their terms. What will Greece think of this bailout without the austerity measures? And you've also got stories coming up to this Greece election that some of these Greek uh, parties are looking for ways to exploit this Spanish bailout for the Greeks. And then we've still got the issue that when we get to Gr this Greece election and it, it comes out whichever way we think it's going to come out, that we still have got exactly the same problems that Greece may not be there. Even if this bailout ends Spain's banking wars, the country is still in recession and struggling with austerity, high unemployment and high levels of debt. 
and that means many fear the money to rescue Spain's banks just won't be enough. Business Desk, DD News. And joining us now is our correspondent Siddhant Sibal from the newsroom to talk more about the state of the economy. Siddhant, we'll come to the Indian economy in just a while. First, we'll talk about Spain, this package uh, that uh, was just put forth. Now, you know, if you were to look at uh, the euphoria that was initially created after news of this 100 billion bailout coming in for Spanish banks, we know it dried out because there are still question marks over the implications of this bailout. So if you could put those implications in perspective for us, looking at high unemployment, also the debt for Spain that could rise after this bailout? Well, uh, Marcus actually take this 100 billion uh, 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 euros bailout as a band-aid approach. It's like throwing money to solve problem, but it won't solve problem because ultimately the debt to the GDP ratio of the country, that is Spain, will rise. And there are now fears that other countries in the eurozone may ask for a bailout, like Cyprus in the line, it has already hinted. There are fears that Italy may also ask, it's the third largest economy in uh, Eurozone, and if it's asked for a bailout, obviously there will be implications. Uh, uh, Spain obviously is not the first country to receive a bailout. Uh, Portugal, uh, Ireland and Greece have been getting bailouts before Spain got. And Spain hasn't got a full-fledged bailout, it's just a bailout of its banks, in the sure. sense too, it's not a sovereign bailout. Sure, Siddhant. You know, we also heard the market strategist Josh Raymond there saying that the need of the hour is really for more fiscal surgery that's required. Now, what kind of a surgery are we talking about here? Because we've seen that bailouts are not the answer to actually, uh, uh, you know, for as a long-term approach. We've seen that austerity measures are not populist and they're not working with the people of these countries who are now looking for bailouts. So what really could be the other factors that need to be taken into account and what kind of fiscal surgery are we looking at? Well, there are lots of solutions are thrown into how to solve the problem, but uh, uh, no concrete solution have come out. Of course, fiscal surgery means uh, creating a kind of, a f of one of them which includes is creating a kind of a firewall uh, between the southern European countries and rest of Eurozone because it's, the problem is basically in the southern European countries. There have been reports of making a banking union which is to recapitalize the bank, make the banking system across the Eurozone a, a strong system. There are reports that this banking union will come to existence by 2013, but as of now it's all in papers. And uh, uh, there are other ways, uh, new, new capital rules for banks have been proposed, but all on papers. Only solution is all the leaders need to sit together and find out a solution. And that's what we can find out in the, the two major summits which are going to come on. First, the uh, big Eurozone summit which will happen uh, uh, last week of this month. And the G20 summit which of course will be dominated by news from the Eurozone. We saw last week that uh, various uh, G7 leaders uh, had an emergency talk of, of how to solve the situation. Of course, they were not a major outcome, but it still helped to douse the markets. So we can see a similar, uh, a kind of a banded approach to solve uh, s uh, small term problems. But of course, it's not solving the bigger problem of the entire Eurozone crisis. Now, of course, Eurozone crisis affects the entire world since we live in a globalized world and all the economies are very much con connected. China is very export dependent, we know that. And of course, there have been reports by OECD, World Bank and IMF that of of course, China will see a, a, a slowdown in its economy and of course, if China slows down, the world economy is bound to slow down. The American president in the, uh, during the weekend himself said that Eurozone leaders must act. The Chinese are also anxious to see some actions and of course, everything depends upon the big Greece election which is going to take place on 17th of uh, June, which is uh, this uh, weekend. And sure. in this, in this uh, election, it will be decided whether the pro-austerity uh, pro party, parties or anti-austerity par parties will, uh, will take over the government. And if they are like anti-austerity parties, we can see Greece going out of the Eurozone. Okay. Siddhan, now also this is, uh, you know, it's, we know that this crisis is spiraling out of control. It's affecting other countries as well. Now the impact that it's having on India. Uh, let's talk about the IIP figures that came out today. We saw very flat growth, 0.1%. Uh, you know, looking at that, it just shows that India is an investment uh, destination. Uh, the question marks that have been put uh, by SNP as well yesterday, uh, that could be crucial where India is concerned. So what uh, uh, needs to be done where India is concerned, uh, looking at the global crisis, to try and make India a more investment prone destination? We saw the ch chief economist of the Ministry of Finance, Kaushik Basu, warning that, of course, India will have 
impact of the eurozone mm. but uh, various industry bodies like cia and fiki have said uh, we should not be concerned about uh, 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 the crisis itself we should concentrate more on the uh, internal factors such as uh, movement on policy the rbi uh, uh, we we think the rbi policy next week so easing of the rbi policy controlling the inflation in a sense these are the dampness we are seeing the rupee slide down is basically an internal factor but of course we are linked to global economy we will still see some uh, problems in, in in the country itself greece accounts for 0.2% of the global economy yes if go it's if it goes out there will be re repercussions but there are indian states which have more gdp than greece itself so we need to worry and uh, the the, uh, the, um, the finance ministry officials themselves said that they are working on a uh, on a plan just in case greece goes out and there will be problems in india uh, siddhant also there were some reactions coming into that snp warning uh, about india being downgraded as an investment destination from the economics affairs secretary if you could also give us an update on that well yesterday we saw snp coming out with its report that it could downgrade india's uh, investment grade and uh, the finance minister himself uh, was in a self uh, he just didn't Uh, reacted strongly to it, saying that uh, that report should not be counted in. Now today, uh, R. Gopalan, uh, the economic secretary in the finance ministry, said that S N B uh, this uh, grading is not as transparent. They need to be, they need to have a transparent process. And uh, India has been regularly in touch with the S N P people, and now they will be having a video conferencing with the S N P, and will be asking for the reason that why, what are the reasons behind this uh, this outlook that uh, they're saying that a uh, India could be the uh, one of the first member of the BRIC to be downgraded. They even said that Spain, which is on the verge of default. still has a, uh, a an investment grade and india which obviously has a uh, given the size of it given its uh, global outlook given its uh, high growth trajectory uh, uh, previous year is having uh, is being threatened by a downgrade Siddhant, so now you know we saw market. Let's uh, we're just going to try and understand what happened with the markets as well. Now, yesterday we saw the market slipped about 50 points after this S and P warning came in. Today, even after those IIP figures came in, the markets did not react. They actually ended in the positive. Now, what were the key reasons for that one, happening? Well, one of the key reason was uh, like uh, this uh, slowdown in growth uh, will obviously impact the RBI's policy next week. because rbi is keenly balancing the growth versus the inflation debate which has been going around for a, a quite a long time in april we saw rbi easing its uh, interest rates now it's highly expected given the fact that uh, the growth is uh, down to its uh, uh, lowest in nine decade in a, in a decade at 5.3% and to overall growth uh, last year in uh, 2011 12 was 6.5 lowest in a decade so obviously rbi has a pressure to start up the growth now and uh, obviously inflation obviously is not under control but growth is a major thing in the minds of policy makers right now uh, you know like you said there are expectations that the rbi could cut key rates to try and give a boost to to production to investment rather but what else needs to be done to try and give this boost for fii's or fdi's uh, for it to, for india to be a better investment destinations for foreign players well we saw uh, when the budget came out the gar the, the was a damper in a sense it scared away the fii's but uh, right now the uh, finance minister finance ministry itself came under damage control mode and it has been kind of uh, put an up at a back burner but the key factors to be watched are of course the monsoons uh, if they are good obviously they will help the policy makers and india as whole and of uh, it will help uh, cool down the inflation other factors are the eurozone crisis if the elections uh, in the greece goes in a positive way we will see a positive vibe across the world and secondly uh, the whole investment scenario which has been down for a while right now for uh, the first quarter of this uh, fiscal we saw the crude prices also uh, coming down and obviously if crude prices comes down it will have a positive impact in the uh, whole uh, cad and the fiscal deficit we are seeing that 
So that if you were, you know, to talk about the Eurozone crisis, now we know, we know what the U.S. is saying. We uh, heard what President Barack Obama said over the weekend about how uh, Eurozone leaders need to sit together and come up with a political solution to the crisis. But what are the other economies uh, really trying to do to try and help the Eurozone get out of this current crisis? Because we know that it's a global problem. It does not just concern the Eurozone. Well, every economy, every country in, in the world is trying its best to, con uh, to kind of prevent the uh, crisis affecting its economy. Let's start with China. China had cut its key interest rates uh, 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 earlier this month, first time since the 2008 financial crisis, to boost up demand in the economy and so that uh, there is a growth pattern in the whole country in a sense. We are seeing a slowdown in the uh, Chinese economy. East Asian countries are also on that trajectory. India is in a kind of uh, a positive mode in the sense the government is saying that we will work on the uh, whole policy reforms after the presidential elections. The Americans are obviously uh, very scared for the fact that this is an election year in America and Obama will obviously be positive in a sense. Uh, put his force on the economy. We saw the American GDP numbers which were obviously low at 1.9% which were much below the uh, analyst expectation and the job uh, numbers which came out in America were also down by uh, 69,000 way below analyst expectation. Now coming to Eurozone, Eurozone has been facing a recession kind of a situation, zero growth in the first quarter of this year and uh, Spain itself facing the highest unemployment in the region. Okay. At least 1% in 4% uh, uh, is unemployed. 25% of population sure, is unemployed. So, you know, you're talking about unemployment, Siddhant, very important. Now, also, uh, we're seeing how that's affecting India as well. You stay with us right now. Also joining us on the phone line is our correspondent, Ajay Mishra, to talk to us more about uh, uh, the scenario in India, those IIP figures that came in.